Welcome to the Identifying and Establishing Relationships VCAST. Hi, I'm Jean. I'm Elaine. And I'm Kapila. So why should leaders pay attention to building relationships? Let's look at it through a couple of lenses. Your role as a VISTA leader and the science of neural leadership. Neural leadership refers to the emerging field of study that brings scientific knowledge about how the brain works to the field of leadership. And one domain of neural leadership is collaborating with others. This is about forming relationships, and we know forming relationships is the first step to really all levels of collaboration. And introducing yourself is the first step to collaboration. Achieving your goals as a VISTA leader and supporting members in achieving their goals is directly related to building collaborative relationships. In addition, establishing relationships as a VISTA leader is the beginning of building your own social and career network. Relationships are at the center of our personal and professional lives. They're foundational. Research tells us even that having a best friend at work is one of the key elements of being successful, meeting goals, and being fully engaged at work. So who should you meet as soon as possible? Of course you want to meet anyone that comes your way, but more specifically, you should take the initiative early on to meet your supervisor, the VISTAs you'll be supporting, and of course their site supervisors, and any other key organizational staff, including the executive director. These individuals represent the key relationships for most VISTA leaders. Your placement in organization may suggest others that you should be deliberate about meeting, the point is to be open, be friendly, reach out to those people that you'll be working with on a regular basis so that they know you recognize their value to your success. There are several useful actions one needs to consider in initiating and establishing essential relationships at your Vista project site. I would like to share three very specific tips. I recommend doing your homework first. This involves some information gathering about the individual's background and position. Generally, the questions I like to focus on when gathering information involve questions such as, how long has this person been working in this position? What's his or her role and relationships to the VISTA program? And how does this person's position relate to the VISTA leader's role? Knowing these factors beforehand, allows me to approach and engage with the person in an appropriate way. Knowing this background information allows the conversation to be centered on the other individual, which in turn sends a message to the person that you are really interested in knowing about him or her. The second technique is the invitation. Using an inviting gesture or permission-seeking approach is a great way to discuss and establish future communication and work protocol with the individual. This invitation could be extended by inquiring what would be the best way to communicate with him or her. When you seek such information, it conveys a sense of respect and sensitivity you have for that person as well as for his or her situation. Finally, I think it is important to convey to the individual that I see him or her as a guide or supporter bringing strength and support to my work. This could be simply communicated by saying something like, as a new VISTA leader, there is a lot I have to learn and I know that you will be a great asset in that process. Are there any specific areas of information that you think I might be able to come to you for support and guidance? When you convey that the individual is a potential strength to your work efforts, he or she might become more open and willing to support you in your VISTA leader role and responsibilities. Your ability to communicate clearly and succinctly about your VISTA leader duties is critical to successful relationship building. This gives members of both the sponsoring organization and the community served knowledge about you and about your VISTA leader roles. Seeking first to understand and then seeking to be understood, which is the fifth of Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, is a great way to integrate yourself into the organization and into the communities your VISTAs are serving. Begin the communication process by asking a lot of pertinent questions. This signals your interest to learn, and understand and to be part of the organizations and the project's missions. 
Decide what you want others to know about you. If you are hardworking, determined, and passionate, be sure your words as well as your behaviors convey that on a consistent basis. People are prone to creating impressions of people when they first meet. Make sure the impression they make of you is real and true. Only you can ensure that by being conscious of your verbal and nonverbal communication. Think about what you want them to know about you and put it out there. But make sure it is the authentic you. Finally, lots of us are comfortable meeting and greeting people and others of us are more shy and tentative. Social science refers to our ability and need to interact with others as introversion or extroversion. Not everyone is an extrovert. So if you find yourself being quieter and more of an observer, you'll have plenty of time in your leader year to utilize those talents and abilities. But initially, urge yourself to step forward and get to know people. Some extroverts struggle with being good listeners as they enjoy talking and meeting people. If you are an extrovert, Take a step back and ask some good questions and get to know people through active listening. Know when to step up and step back. This is critical to your success as a leader. And now Jean will offer a closing comment. Let's close this VCast with a Dale Carnegie quote that has withstood the test of time. You can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. Thanks for listening.